Hello everyone, my name is Azatru, how are you and welcome to another Star Wars Squadrons video. In this one, I'm going to be answering questions you've had about the skin customization in the game. After my recent customization showcase, there were a lot of common questions in the comments, so I thought it would be a great idea to answer them and give some extra context to the unlocks in Squadrons. Believe it or not, you can actually go in third person, and I'd recommend watching the entire video before commenting, as there is quite a few reasonable factors to consider when it comes to the customization aspect of this game. For example, you can earn skins offline. Yes, that is true. Playing fleet battles by yourself offline with AI will allow you to earn currency to purchase cosmetics in the game, just at a slower rate than playing online, which makes a ton of sense, and this is a great thing. So, let's dive into the question, starting with the most frequently asked question, which is, why are there skins for your pilots if you can't see them in-game? Well, that is not entirely true. Whilst most of the game is played in first person, you can see your character in third person at various times. In the briefing room before a multiplayer match, you can see your teammates and you can see their cosmetics, and that means they can see you and your custom pilot look. But by default, you are restricted to first person, which is annoying, I must say. However, you can use several emotes, you can equip various ones, and there is a whole list that you can unlock, and when you use the emotes, you go into third person, you see the animation, and you can see all of your character, but it works just like in Battlefront. If you're in first person, you do the emotes, it takes you into third person, and after the emote is done, you're back in first person. Secondly, in the campaign, you can actually see your pilots in the cutscenes, and you can customise them just like in multiplayer. Instead of having a set character that you can't change much, such as Aiden or Cal in other Star Wars games, this functions much more like Halo Reach's Noble Six. I know many of you will like this because player freedom is a good feature. The pilots of the winning teams at the end of matches in the end of round screens are displayed with their victory poses. Oh, and your pilot's icon will be displayed in the top left hand corner of the screen for your team throughout the entirety of a match. I know this is still not a lot of third person gameplay, and I would like to see more opportunities to go in third person in the hangar and the briefing room and things like that, but it is false to say that you can't see your pilots in third person at all. Plus, if you couldn't customise your pilot at all, a lot of people would be mad and want customization even if you can't really see it. Another question so many people have rightfully asked is, why can we customise our ships when we can't pilot them in third person? Great question, but they are still visible in the story and for everybody in multiplayer, including kill cams and spectator mode. And just like my final point in the last question, can you imagine not being able to customise your ship, even if we are locked to first person? Imagine Motive not allowing us to even change one part of our ship. No paint jobs, no decals, nothing. So many people would be mad about this, and player freedom is usually a good thing, and they are giving us this option even if we can't play in third person. It is just expected that you'd be able to change just at least something, even if it is just a decal or a skin on the Starfighter. The game is designed to be first person for various reasons, and even if you don't like it, that does not mean they should not do skins. The cockpit items make more sense because you are going to be seeing them most of the time in-game, so they are a nice touch and a welcomed addition. Moving on to another question a few people have made a point about. As you can toggle on a setting to make everybody's cosmetics default to a standard film style experience, what is the point in customization then? This again is a valid question. All of those cosmetics you've unlocked won't be visible at all to some players, but that is okay. Why? Well, I highly doubt most people will be toggling this setting on. Plus, all of your items are earned by playing the game. There is no microtransactions. You can only earn unlocks by playing the game. There is no real money used here. 
If you paid real money for a skin, I could understand this being an issue. Therefore, I was against a setting like this for Battlefront 2 for the exact reason. People paid real money for skins, and other people wanted a map-specific skin toggle, meaning those who paid real money for something to show off to people would not appear. I know some people will say that player freedom comes into play here, but I do think that real money carries a bit more weight than time spent playing a game for unlocked. And this is all entirely my opinion. It's okay to disagree. Game developers cannot please us all, but there has to be a compromise. Getting different point of views is helpful when evaluating the situation and can help you understand why a design choice was made. Skins in first person games like Call of Duty Modern Warfare or Battlefield 5 obviously don't make as much sense as a third person game such as Battlefront 2 or Fortnite due to the limited time that you see your character. First person skins are just not worth paying money for in my opinion compared to third person skins. And in this game, all of the skins are free in a $40 game. So is it really a detrimental issue? No, not really. There are some people that just love customization and don't care if they can't really see it. They just want something to unlock, something to equip, and if you can see it some point of the game, that's cool, they're just into that. I was reading the comments and some of you just don't care that you can't go in third person, and you don't care that it's limited times that you can see your skins for both pilots and ships. And just like anything else, that is your own opinion, which is allowed. Some of you won't agree with that stance, and that is okay. We all have different opinions, and the best thing to do is respect that. One final question I've seen a lot is, what about the law? Stormtroopers can't have custom skins under the Empire? Surely not. Well, this game is set after the destruction of the Death Star, so the Empire don't really care as much, and I'm sure you'd expect in, just like in real world, in Star Wars, pilots would want to change up their appearance just a little bit. And this story is canon, so paint jobs on pilots is now canon. And I'm sure in the past it probably was anyway. This seems to be like a less serious game that's taking creative choices for the sake of being a game, not a super serious film. And you're even able to turn off the skins if you really don't want to see them, as I've mentioned before. If you really don't want to see anyone else's cosmetics, just turn that toggle on and you can forget it even exists in this game. So that is all for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you learned something new and found some of the stuff interesting. I'd love to hear your opinions now that you've listened to the entirety of the video, so comment below the like button, your thoughts, and if you are new around here, make sure you do subscribe for more Star Wars Squadrons videos. Remember to turn notifications on so you don't miss any future videos. Drop a like if you enjoyed this video and thank you so much for watching again. Check out any of the two previous videos on screen if you did miss them and I shall see you in my next Star Wars Squadrons video. Goodbye.